Good evening. My name is Auntie Karen, but you, my name is Karen Wall, but you can call me Auntie Karen. Welcome back to another episode of Reading to the 246, a space where children of all ages, including us adults, come on, facts about Barbados, island across, islands across the region, and countries across the world. As we get ready to celebrate International Day of Mathematics tomorrow on March 14th, our focus for today, our for reading, will be a bit different. Which brings me to this evening's guest. Cheryl Greenwich, or C.M. Greenwich, as she's more properly recognized, attended the St. Martin's Girls School, the Princess Margaret Secondary School, and the Barbados Community College. In 1988, she started her career as a primary school teacher. In 1997, she enrolled at the Erdison Teachers Training College, where she completed her diploma in education. In 2005, Cheryl was made Early Childhood Coordinator at the St. Martin's Mangrove Primary School. She is the author of 10 workbooks for infants. These include World Word Building for Infants, a spelling and reading aid for beginners, Grammar Made Easy for Infants, Books 1, 2 to 4, Number Bonds for Infants, and First, Second, and Third Step to Mathematics. Please welcome Cheryl Greenwich. Thank you. Welcome again, Ms. Greenwich. Please share with us your journey to becoming an author for the series, this series of books. Well, it started though many, many years ago in terms of making worksheets for children and then um, children helping me to improve my worksheets. I then decided to put them all together in a book. And then I saw someone wor working on a book and I said, maybe I could do it. So that's where my first book started. I'm really excited to get into this. Tell us about what we'll be going to see. Okay. The story I have chosen today is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You know that there were seven dwarfs and I have just a few um, number stories to help us to work out using the number bonds for seven since we're dealing with seven dwarfs to um, work out some mathematics problems. Okay. Now when we come back, we'll get into Snow White and the seven dwarfs, seven dwarfs with a twist. Even my words are twisting. <laughs> Okay, over to you, Cheryl, and your presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Mm -hmm. Where these scrolls came from. Here are the seven doors, Sneezy, Sleepy, Happy, Dark, Grumpy, Dopey, and Bashful, seven doors. When we started, I never saw these links. I'm not sure what's happening here. Okay. Somebody should open. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, three of the dwarfs went to work. We want to find out how many did not go out to work. Now, these are, these are very, very simple sum, and this would be used mainly for, could be infants A, maybe a bright reception, or maybe someone in infant B who's having a few challenges. I know if there are children in here who are older, they say, oh, this is very, very easy. But this is how I will present it to my class. Here are the seven dwarfs. We use the number seven, and we have our seven counters here. And we are taking away three of them. 
So what we can do is just use our strokes to cross off three. Or we can take away the three dwarfs and to see how many are left. And children, please don't think that the face is flat enough. Make sure you're typing your answers in the chat. You can continue, Ms. Renee. Okay, thank you. All right, so we can see that we have four counters. If you're drawing your counters, that we will have four counters left, or we can see that we have four of the dwarves remaining. Okay, so our answer is four. Very good, Jaden. Thank you very much. Okay, we have another story. It says two of the dwarfs names begin with the letter S. How many do not begin with S? This is not so hard. We can look and see from here that there are two, Sneezy and Sleepy, their names begin with the letter S. And we have some other dwarfs. So you want to find out what we will have to do have our seven dwarves, and there are two that begin with S. So we have to remove those two to find out how many would be left. Someone says five. I think you are right, but let's check. Let's make sure, because sometimes we think we know the answer. So how are we going to do that? We have our seven marbles to represent the seven dwarves. We're going to cross off one. We're going to cross off two. And we will see how many are left. We have four at the top. And we know that four plus one makes what? Let's see. Let's take a one, take out two. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Five is the answer. Thank you. Yes. And we have five. Five with, with their names not beginning with the letter S. Okay. Now, let's see what this is now. Snow White puts two plates on the table for the dwarves. How many more plates she need? Somebody's scoring again? Um, that would be Malachi. Malachi, please stop doing that. You can cancel it. Okay, all right, thank you. It says, how many more plates does she need? Okay, so here we have two plates. Two plates, and it says how many does she need because she needs to feed all seven of the dwarfs. She needs to feed all seven. So what we're going to do, we're going to count on from two, and we're going to put our counters in this space here. It says two plus something equals seven. What am I going to put with two to get seven? So let's go. You're counting on from two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we can see how many counters we have above this space here. So we have the two plates and we can add the plates again. Remember, we want to get to seven. What must I put with two to make seven? So we have two, let's count on. Three, four, five, six, Seven. And we know that two plus three equals five. So the answer is two plus five equals seven. Okay. We have another one. It says Snow White has a job for the seven dwarfs. She can only find four of them. How many dwarfs are missing? How many of them are missing? Okay. Yes, I saw three as my answer. Let's see, we have some really smart children in our group. So we're starting off with four of the dwarfs. So we have four, remember there's seven in all. So this is four plus something equals seven. What must I put with the four so I can get seven? So we're counting on from four. So we say four, five, six, Seven. So let's see, we have the four dwarfs at the top. How many are we going to add to these four to make seven? So we're counting down from four again. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're stopping at seven. And we can see that three extra dwarfs here, three dots. So the answer is 
three. What must I add to four to make seven? The answer is three. Four plus three equals seven. I have another one to share with you. It says Snow White makes beds. She finishes making one bed. How many more beds does she have to make? Oh, so you know, say six. Yes, six. Okay, let's see how we are going to work out this. Okay, it says this is how we're going to arrange our sum. One plus something equals seven. One plus something equals seven. What must I put with one to make seven? If I have one bed made, how many more do I need to make so that I would have all seven beds made? Okay, so let's see. We're counting on from one. How I normally do it, you make a fist and say one with your hand closed and then count on putting, on a putting up a finger each time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how many counters? Yes, six. So let's see, one bed, one. So we count now from one, one, this one will be two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're counting on from one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that says, what must I put with one to make seven? The answer is six, because six plus one equals seven. Okay, thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, a story where we have some worded problems to be solved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Who knew that Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs could be turned into a whole math story? When we come back, that's the end of story time. When we come back, I have some more questions for Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl, can you please share with us how your series of books are used in schools and perhaps by parents? I actually have one here that I would have bought a couple of years ago that I started using with my class. And then I also used it with my son, especially with the section on the verbs, opposites, prefix, homophones, types of sentences. It's just chock so full of so many activities. Uh, your mic is muted, Cheryl. Let's forget to on. Okay. Um, some of the books are in a couple of the primary schools and as you can be browse in the bookstores i'm sure that parents can look and see what their child is doing at the time and and i'm sure that they would pick up a book and it is really good for revision revision purposes if they're not using it in the, in their in the, um, the school at the at the time but i wouldn't recommend it being used at the school and then being used at home unless the teacher sends homework to you because I recommend that you don't use the same books. Okay, use the book in the school and then use one at home. But I think some parents would enjoy using 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 the books with their child because I think they're very user friendly. Yes, because they definitely have a Barbadian twist for some of the questions and some of the sentences. They actually have I actually would come across one that says Rihanna. It was a question I saw yes, with Rihanna. I, Yes, I um I try to use names that are Barbadian foods, places in Barbados, so that the children will be familiar. Even um the teachers, if their child does not know, then the teacher will be able to explain certain things. Maybe um like um the surfer, I don't remember his name right now. I also have his Brian, name. Brian Talma. Uh, Brian Talma, yes, and the surfer um. What's her name? The names are not coming to me now, but I just try to put names, sports, people, people that the children and the teachers will be familiar with. I know you can, I can access your book on Amazon, but for like you said, like parents, any particular book stories that, that they are in, 
They are in all of the bookstores, Cave Shepherd, um, Day's Bookstore, Brydon's, and Cloyster carry the books. Yes. So parents, if you want to get those books for that, I know test is coming up. If you want something to use to revise, I definitely be using mine for some revision. So you can get her there and you can get, hold it up, Grammar. This is Grammar Made Easy, but this is just one of a series of books. Now, children, let's see how we can can continue to test our math skills with the aid of Snow White and the Seven Drops. Now we have some questions for the younger students. Let's see if my older readers are able to solve these math equations. It says Snow White takes five apples from a tree on Monday. If she takes three times the amount of apples on Tuesday, how many apples does she have in all? I'll repeat the question. Ah! <laughs> Let me try again. So, no, I picked five apples from a tree on Monday, and she picked three times the amount of apples on Tuesday. How many apples does she have in all? And I saw Chaz, he was quick on the ball as usual, and his answer was actually correct. 20, and I've seen some others coming in. Celine, 20. Fear, he's there as well with 20. Nasser, he's also there with his answer, 20. Good. So we use some multiplication with a classic reading story. Good. The seven dwarfs, next question. The seven dwarfs mine 63 diamonds in the mine. If the dwarfs dug up the diamonds equally, how many diamonds did each dwarf, sorry, how many dwarfs did, how many diamonds did each dwarf dig? So let me repeat it. The seven dwarfs mined 63 diamonds in the mine. If the dwarfs dug up the diamonds equally, how many diamonds did each dwarf dig? Okay, I'm seeing some nines coming in. Some nines, some nines, some nines. Let's see. Good. And the answer is indeed nine. The answer is indeed nine. Good. So, Ms. Greenwich, are there any plans to add to your series of books or to create any new series? Um, right now, no, not right now. Um, someone has been calling me. I've got more than one teacher. Um, they want something for a nursery, but I have not. I just have a couple of worksheets, but I have not done. I don't have anything for nursery. It means from reception to class one in regular primary school. Right. When we come back, it's time for a Bajan mashup. So here's our first question. Say the name of a primary school teacher who influenced you. Um, I would have to say Erla Adams. She's now Mrs. Maloney. She taught me in class one when I was at um, St. Martin's Girls. And I had this, um, I was privileged to work with her at Bailey's Primary School oh, as nice. a teacher. <laughs> it's nice. Yes, you know, it's, it's always good when um, you go back, like when I became a teacher, and then my class one teacher, she was the senior teacher at St. Joseph Primary School, and then she went on to be the principal at Roku Cumberbatch. She passed, but I always remember it is it's good to know when, when you meet upon persons who would have influenced you. Um, in your journey to becoming a teacher. What was your favorite sport at school? Um, I would say that I had a favorite sport. Um, I probably like just watching cricket. I like cricket. So in terms of me playing, no, I don't I did not really take part in sports. Oh. If you were able to exchange places with a famous Barbadian for a day. Who would it be? Um, probably the Prime Minister. 
Nice, nice, nice. That's such an interesting play. I would, I would be thinking like Rihanna, so I could do that. Some money, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Premise, I think the premise I have some, so that would be good enough for me. I don't want, I don't want millions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, your favorite Barbadian dish and why? Um, I think it would be soup. I'm always, I love dumplings, so it will be soup. And in my classes, I'm always talking about dumplings. Whenever we're doing math, they're always dumplings. Dumplings are always in my math math lessons. So I think it would be soup. And you know we have to share our dumplings equally. We can't make sure that we can't let anybody get more dumplings than in that. Because then it will cause a quarrel in the whole So Yes. We <laughs> share the dumplings equally. Okay. Say the name of the first book that you wrote. And the last book that you read. Okay, my first book was Word Building for Infants. Um, it's for the reception, mainly age group. And the last one, which is um, Third Steps to Mathematics, it is not quite out, but hopefully it will be ready soon. Third Steps to Mathematics. So it will be for mainly the infants B age group. Thank you very much, Ms. Goodness. That is Beijing National Forest this evening. Now, children, before we go to Simon says, do we have any questions for Ms. Greenwich or any questions? Can you come up with a question using a classic fairy tale? You have to raise your hand and I'll give you a chance to answer. Think of a classic fairy tale. We have Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs today. Can you think of a question with a fairy tale that you may have read? What about Hansel and Gretel? What about if Hansel and Gretel um, have 10 kids and they have to share those 10 kids equally between themselves? How much would each person get? Okay, I see the logic T, logic T01, raise your hand. Who's that? You can go ahead with your question and turn on your mic. Yes, dear, you can go ahead. Oh, you, you're giving me the answer. I thought you wanted to ask a question. Me? Yes, go ahead. What's your I question? Was, I was going to say, does Simon always say Simon says? Mm -hmm. Simon? Yes, Simon always does say Simon says. That's one of the good things about Simon. He's very... He uses the same language all the time. Yeah. What about Cinderella? What about if Cinderella slept for five days? Okay. The person just needs to mute their microphone. I'm just looking to mute now. Just remember to mute your mic once you're finished. Good. So Cinderella, she slept for five days. Then she got up and she slept for another 10 days. How long did Cinderella sleep for? Yes, 15. So she, she, she yes, 15 days. She did a lot of sleeping. She was very sleepy. Sometimes, like teachers, she should get a little bit sleepy too. I'll even ask you, Karen, do you get a little bit sleepy? Oh, yeah, I do. Sorry. Oh, hi, Hannah. Yes. You wanted to answer? Yes. What about, hi, what about if Cinderella got one red apple and then she got two more red apples? Hannah, do you want to answer that question for me? How many apples did Cinderella have? She had one red apple and then she got two more red apples. How many apples did Cinderella have? Mm -hmm. Three. Three, yes. Round of applause. Nice. So she got three red apples. So there's so many ways that we can use our 
story to incorporate them into mathematics. And also remember that World Mathematics Day, the International Day of Mathematics, is being celebrated tomorrow. So you can also, at your own school, get involved and do something related to mathematics. Good. So last week, Simon Says answer was the banana. This week, Simon Says, follow the operation. Repeat, follow the operation to each his own. Who, what, where am I? Let me repeat it for you. This week, Simon says, follow the operation to each his own. Who, what, or where am I? Give you a chance to think about it, if anyone can be able to answer. Turn into the chat. I'll repeat it one last time. Simon says, follow the operation to each his own. Who, what, where am I? Give you a chance to think about it. So if you don't get any answers today. Uh, yes. uh, a, a hospital? No, please. No, please. <laughs> not here. <laughs> not here. Not theory is an operation. It's not a hospital. Ah, add ear. I'm seeing some different things mm, in the chat. Mm. Mm. I'll repeat it one last time. Follow the operation to each his own. Who, what, where am I? Remember, there's some keywords that we're supposed to know when we're doing mathematics. Good. Now remember. Children and parents is not subtraction, as sir. <laughs> Remember, children, not perimeter child. <laughs> yes, it has something to do. Who just, who just said it? Some person just said it. Kalia. Yes, Kalia. Woohoo! Our Kalia wins the prize today, so Kalia will take it home. Division, yes. A key word in division is each. So, that. Follow the operation to each his own. So I have some prizes to give out next week. So I have four prizes I have to give out. I have Chaz, I have Ari, I have Nasir, and um, I don't know who is it, Nasir. Nasir, and this week we have Kalia. So next week we have are going to get my four prizes so you will know what it is that you'll be getting next week. Good. So it was division. Now remember, children and parents, so like, comment, and share on our reading to the 246 Facebook and Instagram page. Special thank you to Ms. Greenish for joining us today. Ms. Greenish, any final words before we wrap up? So I'd just like to thank you for having me on the show, and I enjoyed the session here. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. I enjoyed it as well. I think I'm going to go to school tomorrow and I'm going to be putting out stories. All my questions are so great. The classic story. Okay. <laughs> Good. And join us again next week for another exciting, exciting episode of Reading to the 246. After that, we were, we're going to go on break. We're going to take a break for a couple of weeks and then we'll be back. So again, thank you for joining us this week. Have a good evening, everyone. And remember, reading takes you where your imagination can.